Welcome, everyone. I'm Amy. And I'm Liz. And we are the vice presidents of this year's conference, Excelling Together. The Schwartz Women in Business Conference is the largest women's conference in Atlanta, Canada. We wanted to thank you all and all our delegates, uh, advisors, sponsors, panelists, speakers, and the executive team for an incredible weekend. And uh, thank you for all your commitment over this past month. Tonight's gala marks the seventh Women in Business Conference, and we're so honored to have been a part of this year's planning and can't wait to see the growth to come. We are coming to you live from the St. FX campus in the McKenna Center of the Schwartz School of Business. Over a hundred of us students have been uh, meeting virtually over the past day and a half um, of our Excelling Together conference. We are delighted uh, to have St. FX alumni and friends tuning in tonight as well. Thank you all for coming. Tonight, in honor of International Women's Day and in celebration of more than 20 years since the establishment of the Dr. Trudy Egan Women in Business Award, we have organized a special evening for the final gala event of our Excelling Together conference. Tonight, you're going to hear from incredible St. of X alumni uh, from the Short School of Business, four women who are Egan Award winners and who are uh, each making a difference in their workplace and their communities. We're looking forward to hearing from their career paths since they graduated from St. of X. We also have a special guest with us tonight, Dr. Trudy Egan herself from her home in Toronto. Stay tuned until after the panel as Dr. Egan will be awarding, will be announcing live the two awardees of this year's Dr. Trudy Egan Women in Business Award. The Women in Business Society has also has a surprise for Trudy at the end of the night. It's truly going to be an incredible evening. First, however, we'd like to start off the night in a very meaningful way. Please let me ask Courtney McKay to introduce Dr. Shelley Price. Hi everyone, my name is Ali, and unfortunately Shelley wasn't able to make it with us tonight, but I'm here to do a special land acknowledgement. I would like to begin with a, ter a territorial acknowledgement. For those who are unfamiliar with this practice, a territorial acknowledgement involves making a statement recognizing the home long before the arrival of the settlers and who to this day still call it home. Such a statement may be viewed as an act of reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge that we are here on the Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which the Mi'kmaq and Malis people first signed with the British Crown in 1972. I would now like to introduce the 19th President and Vice Chancellor of St. FX, Dr. Andy Haken. Dr. Haken, a professor in chemistry, came to St. FX in July 2020 from Alberta, where he served as the provost and academic vice president at the University of Lethbridge. As provost, he led the strategy to redefine the University of Lethbridge as a destination university with a strong focus on student experience, leading to important advances in academic programming and significant growth, growth in enrollment. Andy completed his undergraduate and graduate work at the University of Leicester in the UK, where he met his wife, Linda. Linda and Andy are, pa are parents of Abby and Callum, who live and work in Calgary, Alberta. Although the pandemic has ensured that it is far from normal times for them, Andy and Linda are greatly enjoying being part of the St. FX University community, as well as the local Annie Ganesh community. Tonight, I am pleased to welcome Welcome Dr. Haken to our event to say a few words. Thank you, Ali. I trust everyone can hear me. It's a real pleasure to be with you tonight. I just want to thank you for that introduction and for the land acknowledgement that really helps to create the right space for tonight's event. I'm really pleased to be here with you to celebrate International Women's Week and to mark over 20 years of the Dr. Trudy Egan Women in Business Award. 
This year, the theme of International Women's Day is breaking the bias. Whether deliberate or unconscious, bias creates barriers which prevent women from moving ahead. Knowing that bias exists isn't enough. Action is what's needed to level the playing field for all. And over the past two days, the Women in Business Society has demonstrated that required action through their commitment to breaking the bias by hosting the virtual conference. Your drive, your initiative, your commitment to providing professional development opportunities to your fellow students is simply outstanding. I congratulate you for this. Your efforts are a great example of experiential education at work. Taking what you learn in the class, reflecting on it, and creating real opportunities for growth. That's what this has been about. Professional lifelong learning is an essential part of career development and your conference serves to ignite that passion. Well done. From learning how to differentiate yourself in your job search, the keynote addressed by our Cintifex board member, Chief Andrea Paul, to tonight's panel discussion, all create awareness and energy to help break the bias. Tonight, we also celebrate women's leadership and commitment. Over 20 years ago, Dr. Trudy Egan made a commitment to Center Fex. Trudy wanted to give back to her alma mater in a meaningful way, in a way that made a difference for students. She created an award that would recognize students who achieved strong academic performance, who displayed determination and perseverance, and had a positive impact on their classmates and on their programs. But beyond the award, Trudy created lifelong relationships with a group of young women who see Trudy as their mentor and as their friend. A philanthropy that spans over two decades has had a truly meaningful impact on award winners and our university. Tonight, we celebrate Trudy. As we acknowledge Trudy's contributions, we can look directly to tonight's panel. It features four Egan Award winners, Bronwyn, Jane, Rachel and Chelsea are excellent examples of our Schwartz School of Business graduates who are excelling in their chosen careers. Building on their education at St. FX has set them on a path for success, on a path to break the bias. Simply said, these women are inspiring. I thank you for the opportunity with you tonight. I wish you all the very best for an evening of learning and celebration in which the barriers of bias will be further diminished. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Haken. We deeply appreciate your support of our efforts. We know you're a big champion of women. Good evening, everyone. It is nice to see so familiar faces. I guess not faces, but names on the screen tonight. My name is Maddie Tennant. I'm a fourth year management and leadership student here at the Schwartz School of Business, and I'm the current president of the Women in Business Society. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Landry and I am also a fourth year management and leadership student here at St. FX. I am the current vice president of the Schwartz Women in Business Society. We first wanna start off by thanking you all for taking time out of your busy lives to spend this Saturday evening with us at the final gala for our 2022 Excelling Together Conference. We'd like to share a little bit about the Schwartz Women in Business Society with you. Founded in 2010, WIB has grown over the last 11 years and so have our efforts towards the campus and community. Our current executive team is composed of 15 intelligent and hardworking individuals. This year's team has shown that with dedication, we can accomplish whatever we set out to do. Maddie and I are incredibly proud of the time and effort our team has put in in all our endeavors. Schwartz Women in Business proudly hosts various panels, skill building, workshops, and networking events throughout the year for women in the business community. Our goal is to represent diversity as a catalyst in organizational success. This year, the Schwartz Women in Business Society had over 100 students become members. We hosted networking events, a LinkedIn workshop, and professional headshots. We had the opportunity to support local Anaganish businesses, such as Peace by Chocolate on Valentine's Day, as well as Elm Gardens on International Women's Day. We are also in our second year of supporting the Make Your Mark Fund. This fund was created in 2020 to support St. FX students in implementing a project or initiative to better the Annie Ganesh or campus community. Students can apply for up to $500 of funding and have our entire executive team as support. This fund has supported seven projects over the last year and a half and we cannot wait to see how it continues to grow. Now that you know a little bit more about our work, let me pass it back to Maddie. 
So hello again. First of all, what a weekend. Standing here tonight is somewhat bittersweet as this marks both Rachel and myself's third and final Schwartz Women in Business Conference. Our team has been looking forward to this weekend pretty much since the 2021 conference ended. Thank you everyone for sharing this weekend with us and for being such keen participants and totally embracing the world's new delivery approach. While this year was different and not in person, it was no less meaningful and that is thanks to everyone who had a hand in the creation of this conference. I want to take a minute to thank those people starting with our executive team. Ray, who was our first year rep, Ali and Heather, our VP of events, Amanda, VP of marketing, Annie and Courtney, VP sponsorship, Mackenzie, VP finance, Liz and Abby, Make Your Mark Fund managers, Shannon and Katya, community relations, and my incredible partner and our vice president, Rachel. And of course, our incredible, an incredible thank you to our VP conference executives, Liz Delaney and Amy Oikel. Ladies, you did it. Of course, none of this could have been done without the daily support of our faculty representative and a woman I am so honored and uh, honored to also call a friend, Jennifer Alex. I also want to thank our conference keynote speaker, Andrea Paul, our conference panelists, Jonathan, Robin, Shelley, and Katie, and our workshop hosts, Killam and Jill Hayden. Your contributions to our conference were so appreciated. Finally, I also want to thank our incredible Eganites for making tonight possible. Bronwyn Burke, Jane Frazier, Rachel Dickey, and Ch Chelsea Knuth. Additionally, this gala would not have been possible without the guidance and support from advancement staff, Alexis McDonald and Professor Mac Mark McIsaac. Behind the scenes, we had so much help from so many people, and this includes James, uh, who made sure we could do our work without facing any te technical difficulties, and Olivia for putting together those am amazing videos you have been seeing throughout the conference. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a little bit nervous, so don't, don't mind me. Um, and lastly, none of this would have been possible without the help of our sponsors, BMO, Deloitte, BDC, Killam, Royal LePage, and Paul Han and Co. Finally, to everyone else joining us on the screen tonight, including many of my peers, I am so lucky to call my friends from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now I'll hand it back over to Liz and Amy. Hi, I would like to introduce this tonight's panel, the Women Who Make a Difference panel. We are so excited to welcome you to come speak to us uh, tonight. So on the panel tonight, we have Bronwyn Burke, class of 2005, who is now a partner at PwC. We also have Jane Frazier, class of 2015, who's now an assistant professor of accounting at the Schwartz School of Business. Rachel Dickey, Class of 2019, Junior Accounting Supervisor at Publix. Chelsea Knuth, 2021 grad, Masters of Accounting at Carleton University. Hi, ladies. How are you? It's great to see all your faces. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So you guys are all Trudy Egan awardees. So... Our first question to all of you, and we'll start with Bronwyn, go Rachel, Jane, and then Chelsea. Um, how has the Trudy Egan Award impacted you? Uh, well, yeah, I can first up. Um, I, I mean, I have a, a personal impact and then a professional impact. So, I mean, Trudy, I, I credit wholeheartedly with initiating my career in business in Toronto um, 15 years ago. Um, and continuing to mentor me uh, through over the course of my career for the for the last 15 years, I think, you know, at the base of it, Trudy is selfless in what she gives to mentoring and supporting young women in their careers. And now, I guess I'm a middle-aged woman, so she gets to support middle-aged women as well. Um, but I, I think the big thing is really around confidence and and um, supporting you when you maybe feel a bit less secure in in your decisions or where you're headed and um, it just, you know, supporting you and validating you along the way um, to achieve the potential in front of you. Uh, thanks, Bronwyn. Um, for me, you know, I, I still remember receiving the call from Trudy, uh, kind of confirming that I had won or letting me know when I was in the Urban Outfitters in Halifax and fully bawling my eyes out um, in the middle of the street. So uh, I think 
for me, um, having the award on my resume and having it be something that I always try to push the conversation to in job interviews just is a really concrete example of um, a lot of the pieces I'm proud of in terms of my time at St. FX. Um, further, you know, there, there is that financial piece associated with the award and, and that allowed me to go um, to Europe and present my undergraduate thesis in um, in Prague. So, you know, that piece was a really, really concrete example that I, I don't think that would have happened to me um, without the True Egan Award. So I'm, I'm thankful to this day. Hi, everyone. Uh, so similar to Bronwyn and Rachel, um, you know, the, the mentorship piece and uh, the financial award coming along um, with the recognition certainly um, helped me in and and kind of where I was at that point. I'd say another thing was also joining a, a network of so many other amazing women who were previous awardees and really being able to connect with those folks and have that in common um, has allowed me to build some relationships and gain experiences that I probably wouldn't have otherwise if it weren't for for the award. Yeah, so for me, um, Trudy Egan helped me in a lot of ways. Firstly, financially, uh, this award allowed me to pursue a master's. So that was huge. It was, it, it was something that was always um, on my mind and wanted to do, but it really became real when I got that note from Trudy. Um, secondly, I work in data analytics and accounting, which is a predominantly male dominated field. So honestly, this award is a reminder that I have a place in this, in this world too and, and uh, in that field and that I am needed as well. Um, so that's great. As you can see, it's right here. I keep it above my desk. So it's a nice little reminder before I enter every single meeting, test, whatever it may be, that uh, we too have a place here. And I'll just echo what Jane said too about it being a network. One of the greatest things for me was joining this community of women too when I got this award. So a lot of women in this community are women whom I've looked up to over the past few years. So it's been really an honor to join them as well. Thank you, ladies. Those are all incredible answers. And we're honored to hear all your words about this too. It'll help emphasize the importance of tonight. Um, if there is one thing that you took away from your time at St. of X specifically as you navigate the business world, what would you say it'd be? We'll start in the same order. Oh, you're just, you're hammering me uh, being the first. Um, but I think for me, the biggest thing coming out of St. of X um, by large is just the importance of relationships. I think, you know, as I've moved progressively through my career, um, you know, at the beginning, you know, the importance of network and, and relationships, but I think it's a bit, uh, you know, far removed in terms of understanding the magnitude of um, what relationships can do for you in business and in life, I would argue. Um, so I think a big uh, piece of that is just, you know, building relationships, maintaining relationships and the energy that goes into that and how important it is. Um, and the second piece, I think, is really around empathy. I, I experienced a lot of empathy from um, the profs in the business school while I was at St. Evax, as well as the senior administration at the time. It was in student politics. And I think just, you know, being in a position to pay that forward and to show up with empathy in my current role with my team as I help some more junior folks kind of navigate their early um, careers and, and uh you know, find space for them to flourish in our organization. Great. Um, thanks, Bronwyn. When, when I uh, reflect on my time at ZFX and kind of what I feel in my day-to-day -day life currently working in advertising, um, what has been the most beneficial. I think the emphasis that St. FX and Schwartz in, in particular places on case-based case learning, excuse me, has been um, monumental to, to my successes early on. Um, I think through, you know, JDCC and, and other extracurriculars, as well as in the classroom with the professors and really those um, true business cases and, and really feeling like Having, I left St. FX and felt like I had a good understanding of a, a variety of different kinds of businesses and different kinds of problems. Um, in advertising in particular, clients come to me with what is essentially a case. It's a brief with a budget and a business objective. And we're going through a lot of the same motions that you would have in um, 
uh, in your fourth year strat class or in the, the JDCC or case comp um, war room. So it, it, that is one thing that I'm sometimes I take a step back and go, holy crap, like this is what I was doing in third year uh, at JDCC and now I, I get paid for it. So <laughs> that's been huge. I think a big takeaway uh, for me from my time at St. Evex and, and something that sort of stuck with me as I've transitioned into my professional career would really be to take advantage of opportunities. So, you know, if the Trudy Egan Award was something that was for first year business students, I mean, it might have been something that I wouldn't have even applied for. So I think throughout my four years at St. Evex, I really was able to develop my self-awareness and confidence through being involved with, you know, societies on campus, within the business school, activities maybe on campus or in residence, things like that. So I think really taking advantage of opportunities, whether it's uh, striking up a conversation with someone or attending an event or, you know, volunteering somewhere, that's something that I've really, uh, really stuck with me and that I've continued to do through my professional career that has allowed me to meet people, build a network, gain experiences, um, all that have been very valuable and, and helpful. So what I would say, um, and again, I'm echoing some points here, but the power of networking that came through St. FX was incredible for me. Um, not only at the beginning in recruiting season, of course, all of these connections are amazing, but also it's important to network throughout your job too. And St. FX really taught me how to do that. So every day we're networking with our clients, we're networking at uh, extracurricular events at the office, things like that, that help you further your career. Um, so that was definitely taken from St. FX. And I'm sure as we all know, St. FX has an amazing community and it's truly something to be um, proud of, especially in this in these times during the pandemic, St. FX has really been able to maintain that sense of community. And I think that's powerful too, when you move into the next phase of your life to remember that you still have that community to lean back on too. So it's been incredible for me to have a lot of my peers reach out and uh, congratulate me when I'm doing well, checking on me when I need some encouragement maybe. So that's been really powerful in my life. Thank you so much, ladies, for your questions. Don't worry, I'll switch it up this time. My apologies. We'll start with Rachel, then go Jane, Chelsea, then Bronwyn. So this is a good question to kind of get to know what you're doing currently uh, now. So what's your favorite part about your current job? Okay, pressure's on. <laughs> um, so I work as an account supervisor at Publicis, um, which is an advertising agency. I'm dedicated to working on the Canadian Tire business, uh, which essentially means that I'm an extension of the Canadian Tire marketing team. And my goal is to partner with them and get their ad campaigns off the ground. So everything from TV to out of home billboards to emails and even direct paper mail sometimes too less frequently now. Um, I think my favorite part of, of working in advertising in particular is because it is a creative industry, there's so many different types of people that I work with. Um, and looking back on, on chatting with the, diff the different folks, you know, from the marketing department at Canadian Tire, there's some fellow St. FX alumni who work there, um, a lot of kind of more maybe traditional um, education backgrounds. And then when I look at my agency side, there's the creative folks who went to art school or who maybe, who maybe didn't go to school at all and kind of found their way to um, the advertising community. And I just find it to be um, a really excellent culture and, and something that I, I really am excited to go to work every day and, and um, get her done with the different, the, the different folks. Wonderful. Uh, so I am an assistant professor in the Schwartz School of Business and I teach first and second year students. And I would say um, the favorite, uh, my favorite part about my job is definitely getting to interact with our students in the business school and on campus. So as I'm sure the the panel and everybody on uh, on the on the call tonight is aware, you know we have amazing students in our business school, and I'm always amazed when I get to interact with them and and talk with them about you know the things that they're excited about doing, 
um, the experiences that they've had or that they want to have. It's really inspiring to get to hear their ideas and their enthusiasm. And after every conversation, I, I always leave feeling like I've learned something. Um, so 100%, I'd say, you know, interacting with our, with our fantastic students would be my favorite part for sure. Speaking from a student point of view, we really loved our professors too, so it goes both ways. Um, so I'm currently working at PwC Ottawa. I'm a risk assurance associate and I work in the uh, digital analytics and enablement practice. So um, I would say that my favorite part about my job is that it's client facing. I get to see firsthand the value that I'm giving to my clients. So um, of course, feedback from managers and coworkers is always great, but that feedback from the clients really motivates you, I find. It's, it's awesome to see that direct impact. Um, another thing that I really like about my job is that it does push my comfort zone. If you asked me if I was going to be working in digital enablement two years ago, I would have said, heck no. Uh, but here I am. And something that's really fun for me is that when the client gives me uh, an ask, so if they, if they come to me with something they'd like to see, um, I immediately at first think there's no way we can do this, but it's, it's really fun to seek out that way. And when you do find it, it's really rewarding. So I would say that challenge is, is one of my favorite parts about my job for sure. And so I'm a fellow PWC here. I'm a, I'm a partner in the digital operations practice. So I lead digital operations for Ontario public sector. Um, and I think I have two kind of favorite parts of my job. One is sort of external facing because I'm also in client service. Um, and one is internal facing. So from a client service perspective, I think the opportunity that I have in front of me is um, that consulting is never a static uh, career. You, it's ever changing, no project is the same, and you kind of are, are constantly put in a, in a place of discomfort um, to understand your client's business and to come up with what we think, you know, collaborative, collaboratively um, are going to be uh, good solutions to whatever the, the challenges are that our clients are reaching. So I think, you know, I've, I've always been innately curious and I think that um, the sort of fluidity and, and lack of predictability in consulting has continued to challenge me in my career, which is why I've stayed in the business. And then internally, I think, and, and you know, one thing I didn't say about the impact that Trudy has had on my life is that I'm in a, in, a, in a position now where I can pay forward all of the mentoring and coaching and support that I've had over the course of my career to uh, young people at PwC, in particular women, and PwC does have a very um, strong focus right now on building female leadership within the firm. Um, and so I'm in a, a great position right now where within my team and more broadly across government and public sector nationally, I'm um, leading some of the efforts to uh, promote and um, support young women in leadership. Awesome. Thank you so much. So now we are going to transition into our individual questions. So the first one is for Jane. So what inspired you to become a professor? Great, thank you. Um, so being a teacher was something that I sort of always wanted to do, coming from a family of teachers, something I really kind of uh, grew up around. And then as I progressed graduating from St. of X, I, I started my career working at a public accounting firm where I obtained my CPA designation. And I found that while, while working at the firm, uh, I had the opportunity to be involved with sort of the professional development side of things. And so um, was able to be involved with kind of the creation and instruction of some of our professional development courses, was able to mentor uh, CPA students who were, who were studying for their final exams and getting to work towards their designation. And that was really the, the stuff that I loved doing the most. So whether it was, you know, teaching a week-long seminar or helping out uh, marking cases for CPA students, that was really the, the areas um, that I was involved in that I, that I really enjoyed, that I really loved, and that really kind of uh, got me excited and, and enthused. So that sort of further validated my, um, my you know, desire to be in the teaching profession 
um, and really kind of confirmed that it was something that I enjoyed, something that I was good at, and something that I you know wanted to do. And that led me to um, pursue where I am now, being at at Saint of X, and very happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you, Jane. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, Bronwyn, the next question's for you. As a consultant, what are the biggest challenges you face on a day-to-day -day basis working with different clients? Um, the biggest challenge we face day-to-day -day is actually not the client part. It's uh, recruiting and retaining good talent uh, within the firm. But uh, from a client perspective, I think that, you know, it, especially in government and public sector over the last years during COVID, we've experienced um, unprecedented growth in our accounts in terms of the support the governments are seeking to deliver services creatively and quickly. Um, so I think, you know, our, our challenges from a government and public sector perspective are to, you know, show fast value for the services that we're delivering to consistently bring a creative um, lens to the problems that they're facing and to try to stay a few steps ahead of where the clients are in terms of anticipating what some of their challenges are. Um, I, I, I mean, I've been fortunate. Some of the junior folks are bringing in, you know, cre creative things that I've certainly, you know, barely heard of. And I'm like, you know, let's do some reverse mentorship here so that um, I'm as tech savvy as, and I don't know if I'll ever be as tech savvy as the 22 year olds, but you know, they're, they're bringing a lot of value and creativity. I think that um, is, fostering a, a good relationship with some of our clients and internally in terms of the value that we're able to deliver. But I think right now our most imminent challenge is kind of coming out of COVID. You know, what, where do we think the big blocks of work are going to be in the big opportunities and how are we going to support our clients and how are we going to retain and, and um, attract the talent we need to be able to deliver those services? Awesome. Thank you. Um, the next question is for Rachel. So can you tell us more about your experience when you presented your thesis abroad? And what would you say was your biggest takeaway from the experience? I love talking about it, so I will happily. Um, I had the privilege of working with Dr. Neil Maltby uh, in my fourth year uh, through his academic research to kind of support and do a bit of a kind of um, side thesis to his overall research. We um, researched the impact of craft beer branding in Atlantic Canada. So really looking at how craft breweries um, create a sense of place in the communities in which they operate. So especially, you know, knowing um, places like Townhouse, for example, that they're, they're really trying to, to be that local hub and create community. And so, um, that was an amazing experience in and of itself. I had the opportunity to, to chat with and interview brewers um, across the Atlantic Canadian provinces, as well as kind of do an overall um, scope and understanding of how every beer in Atlantic Canada is named and, and how they try to create that sense of place. Um, so that's a bit about the research. And then um, Dr. Maltby found this opportunity that was this really niche group of academics that every year meet and, and share their research. And it just so happens that in 2019, it was in, it was in um, Pilsen, Czech Republic. So through um, funding from the Trudy Egan Award, through funding from the Schwartz School of Business, myself and another student um, were, were shipped out and, and presented um, that research there. I think in terms of uh, the, what I learned from, from the time abroad and, and from that experience in particular is that we, we all have, um, you know, regardless of age or gender identity or what have you, we all have a, a place at the table. Um, I just recall sitting in the back of the room at the Beeronomics conference and being one of maybe three women and the youngest person by there by a good 25 years. So, um, and I, I definitely felt a sense of being like, who is this child in the, at the back? Like, what, what is she doing here? Um, but then when I went up and, and presented the findings and presented the research, I was, I could just sense that they, they, I really felt proud of, of um, 
being there and being able to hold my own, even without Dr. Maltby there to kind of be that, that support person who he had been through the whole process. So that was definitely a confidence boost that I've taken, um, took from that experience. Very interesting. Thank you, Rachel. So the next question is actually for Rachel and Bronwyn. So we'll start with Bronwyn and then go to Rachel. So what is the biggest thing you've learned being um, exposed to so many different businesses across uh, Canada? I think the most important thing that I've learned is to listen. Um, I think um, working with different businesses and gaining experience as a consultant can sometimes um, mean that we become presumptuous or um, have a feeling that perhaps we've experienced more than others have experienced because of the breadth of, of the work that we've done. And I think um, early on in my career, perhaps I didn't listen as well as um, I've learned to listen. And I, I think, you know, as I engage with different businesses and different clients now, um, my relationships and approach have sort of changed um, in that, you know, my, my MO is not to come to the table necessarily with all the right solutions or the right perspectives, but it's rather to kind of take a step back and, and um, actively listen to what some of the challenges our clients are facing are um, and to work through that kind of collaboratively with the client in a, you know, in a very um, just collaborative collaborative kind of two-way communication style versus consultants coming in, which we do get a bad rap for kind of coming in with all the all the answers and kind of bombarding people. So I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the last 15 years, I think one of the biggest lessons, regardless of, you know, whether it's just from working with different clients or, or whatnot, but one of the biggest lessons in my career has certainly been to take a step back and listen. I would wholeheartedly echo um, what, what Ryan is, Bronwyn is speaking to. And I think I'm still at a junior enough point in my career that I'm working on listening more because I definitely can get a bit big in the britches sometimes. Um, in addition, I think one piece that I've had to remind myself of is that every we're all just people. And I think when I come into the room and I'm talking to the SVP of marketing at Canadian Tire, which to me feels like such, um, who, she is a very successful person, but like, that's a big deal. And then as you get speaking to them, we're all just people, we're all working together to try to solve the problem or address the issue or make, make the best campaign that we possibly can. And I find, I often have to remind myself that, um, it's just advertising and, and no one's going to yell at you and, and it'll all be okay in the end. So that's been, um, another piece as well of working on some of these preeminent Canadian brands and, and it feels very important and it is, but it's also, it's just work. It's just advertising on top of that. So it's, um, it's not worth burnout or, or anything like that. Awesome. Great answers. That's funny, Rachel, too, because my dad always tells me like, you know, you think it's a big thing. These are all little things. For years, I've been told these are all little things. Um, so Chelsea, the next question's for you. Um, so accounting student to accounting student. What's it like transitioning from being a St. of X accounting student to studying for your CPA and being in a workplace environment? Uh, so that's a good question. Um, St. Effects, I would say, was a really great building block to the CPA program, quite honestly, and I do mean that honestly. Um, as uh, Rachel mentioned earlier, St. Effects does have a good case analysis program. So throughout your undergrad, you will do a lot of cases. Um, and honestly, that was the best thing to transition me into the CPA program. And I know I can't see your faces, but I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes at me. But truly, you do have to learn how to love doing casework. And I was in your seat less than a year ago. I know it's hard. And I know that casework is really uncomfortable when you're in an undergraduate experience. But that was truly what helped me the most. So, um, yeah, you do have to learn to love case writing. And don't go pull your applications yet from CPA. Um, they will prep you and they'll give you everything you need to do to do that. So, um, yeah, that, I would say that the casework was really instrumental in my transition to the CPA program. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, the next question is for Jane. Um, could you discuss more about obtaining your CPA? Uh, what were some challenges that you faced and how did this designation help you with your career? 
Sure. Yeah. So I uh, started the CPA program after graduating from St. FX and I started it while I was working uh, in public practice. So doing it sort of part-time on top of, of work. So I guess in terms of uh, challenges, I think the whole transition, you know, going from being a student at St. Avex, moving to a new place, starting a new job, uh, and then starting school on top of that, all while trying to maintain your sort of life responsibilities and seeing your family and friends. I think um, a challenge would be sort of just the, the transition and kind of doing so many new things um, at once. So trying to evaluate all of your competing priorities, have some sort of sense of, of balance, uh, something that can take a little bit of time to, to figure out. Um, so I, that's what I'd say in terms of challenges. And then kind of on the other side, how the designation has helped me. Um, certainly, you know, being able to expand my network, get to meet so many different people, um, whether they are through, you know, workshops that you attend or groups that you get put in for doing kind of uh, group presentations or projects. I think getting to meet people is, uh, is a great, great part about that. Also, really, the sort of uh, recognition and um, trust and credibility that comes with the designation, I think, has helped me and to kind of open doors for me too. So uh, those are some of the, the opportunities that uh, have helped me. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, last CPA question. This one is for Jane and Chelsea together. What would you say is your number one advice to students currently pursuing a CPA or hoping to in the future? Sure, I'll, I can go first. Um, so I guess advice from, from me for students who are hoping to go down that path. Um, first, I would say that anyone who is, you know, considering is an excellent, excellent career path and certainly opens doors. Some people might have preconceived notions or think that you uh, need to be kind of pigeonholed into a certain area if you go down that path and get your designation. But um, there are many things that you can do with it, um, opportunities that you can uh, take advantage of and different experiences that you can can get by, by doing it. So first I'd say that. And then um, secondly, I would just say, you know, look at sort of the big picture. It can feel like a lot if you're trying to study for exams while you're working and sort of having that long-term or, or big picture um, focus or view can kind of help you as you're as you're going through. So as a current CPA student, I'm definitely taking a lot of that advice to heart right now. It is good to hear and be reminded of every now and then. Um, but I guess uh, I'm about halfway through the program now. So I write my CFE in September. And the best piece of advice I could give anyone entering the program is find a good mentor. Um, mentorship is absolutely instrumental in the program. Um, as Jane mentioned, it's a hard program, it's challenging, but if you have a mentor to encourage you and help you find that bigger picture, that can be really, really motivating throughout. And I mean, this is applicable to business in general, and I think even just life, having a mentor is, is really important. And not only just having any mentor, but a mentor that is a good fit for you. So um, I guess my advice with that would be to look to some of your seniors, maybe someone who already has their CPA or someone who's in a, in a career position that you would like to be in someday. Um, and then just ask them, approach them and, and see whether they would be open to it and uh, make sure that you make it easy for them. Like, um, I, I think I, it's, it's hard for some people to think of themselves of a, as a mentor. And so people are hesitant to say yes, but if you make it easy for them, you know, maybe you say, I'll meet you on your lunch break or we can do a Zoom um, whenever it works best for you, or I'll, I'll come to your work and, and see you there when you're done work, um, they can be much more open to the opportunity and it can really help you in the long run too. So it's impossible to know everything when you're in it, but having that mentor helps you to kind of um, feel like a little bit more comfortable in the position as they've done it too. 
Thank you, Jane and Chelsea, and good luck, Chelsea, in September. Uh, our next question is for Rachel. What are some key differences between managing your main clients? How does managing advertising for non-for-profits differ from managing advertising for for-profits, like uh, grocery brands? Yeah, for sure. So I've had um, the pleasure of being able to work for some some big kind of Canadian retail brands like Sobeys and Canadian Tire. I also um, did some work for Right to Play, which is a non-for-profit. Um, and I think really, you know, it's advertising. It's all about changing behavior and trying to really entice purchase or um so even when we're talking about something like right to play we're, we're seeking donations we're trying to change that behavior um or if it's sobeys it's it's buy more cucumbers so i would say that it's actually more similar than one might think um the the biggest piece is about how we try to change that behavior and what the strategic background is that's informing um, the campaign that you're working on on any given time. Um, but but truly from, from the work that I do, it's, it's working with the marketing managers, working to help them understand their goals and objectives and how to best communicate that to the, to the consumer or the customer. Um, I think that the, the biggest change or the biggest difference I've noticed has been working with a, a really lean company. So for example, um, if anyone's familiar with um, BC Groceries, Thrifty Foods is a, is a small chain of, of about 20 stores owned by Sobeys. Um, so their marketing department is one person versus Canadian Tire, there's 24 clients who I'm working with daily. Um, and that piece of, of being able to um, level set expectations and be able to be a good partner um, and remember everyone's name has been has been a, a really big change and, and that's been um, kind of a big learning curve for me in terms of uh, budget and, and scale of the campaigns as well as just the different personalities. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Bronwyn, this one is for you. Can you tell us about your position at PwC and what the transition has been like from going to a boutique consulting firm to a large firm like PwC, specifically as a woman, oh, as a woman coming in as an associate partner role? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of, of um, different roles there. So I, I, uh, I started my career with, with small firms um, and uh, then went to bigger organizations and I was actually with PwC for um, a number of boutiques. So it, I've kind of gone back and forth a little bit and then back into big firm with PwC as a partner. Um, so my current role, I, I think I said earlier, is leading um, digital operations for Ontario public sector um, for PwC. So um, with that, we're looking at all, you know, core government departments, but as well as Crown Crown organizations, agencies, higher ed, um, healthcare. So working in all of those areas in sort of the, um, what I would constitute as program delivery space. So operating model, service delivery model, service catalogs, how do citizens engage with government to get the services that they need? Um, so working across um, within digital operations, but also across what we call industry aligned teams, which includes um, customer or citizen experience in the government lens, tech transformation um, and strategy type work. So that's that's my current role. I mean, in terms of going back and forth between a boutique and a, and a, a larger firm, I, I personally have always felt that my natural home was in a bigger firm. I have a pretty um, and I wish Trudy was sort of behind me. I mean, she is behind me, but in a different room. I wish she was behind me to see her face because I, I do have a pretty uh, big personality and have always felt that being in a bigger organization with more people and diversity of thought and, you know, other types of diversity was perhaps a more natural place for me to, to live and work. Um, but the boutiques teach you different things too. I mean, being at a smaller firm, the importance of relationships really um, comes through um, the relationships that you're building with clients. It's all a bit different. The talent attraction and retention piece is all a little different and maybe more personalized. 
although you know i would say at a big firm given the way that we're organized i feel that i do have very personal connections with everyone certainly on my team um and make an effort to meet with um everyone on a very regular basis to build those relationships i think just being at a bigger firm you have scale so um the types of projects that you can work are bigger and more complex and the access to thought leadership and expertise is broader in the sense that we're a global um we're, we're not a global partnership but we're a global group of partnerships so um if we need information that you know the australian firm has done we can get that very easily if we need something the uk has done we can get that very easily and apply it to the canadian lens which is um, a limitation of working at a boutique because you just don't have the same scale as as a bigger firm thank you bronwyn um so we have one last question that's individual so um for our last individual question is to chelsea and what has been your biggest learning curve since leaving or graduating saint of x so this is a good one. I think there were way more learning curves that I experienced going into post-grad life than I expected. Um, but one of them is that, um, I guess when you graduate university, in my case, at least, I came out motivated. You know, you have that, you have the dream job in the back of your mind, maybe it's on your vision board, you're looking at it every day. And it, it you kind of, you start out at an entry level position in most cases, and that can be very discouraging. It can make the dream job feel very far away. Especially when you came out of fourth year, you're kind of at the top of the food chain. You felt like you had it all under wraps. You knew what was going on. And then you come into a brand new position in life. And maybe you're work, um, excuse me, working at a company that you previously worked at. Um, but even then, you're most likely starting a new phase of your life. So I found that to be pretty challenging um, and, and a little bit hard to keep my motivation up. Um, as it feels like maybe perhaps in some cases that you aren't as valuable as other people in the firm. But one thing I would say is that um, your value definitely does not equal your position. And I've learned that at PwC throughout my experience there. Um, you can definitely create value at any point in your life. And I think that it's really important to make sure that you take each season and, and use it to grow for the next season. So, you know, you can't just get into that dream job right away. And if you do, you're probably not prepared for it quite honestly, if you don't go through all this stuff. So it's really important to start start somewhere and, and use each one of those positions to your value. I mean, there's learning experiences everywhere and every single day there's an opportunity to learn something new. So I think that stepping into that with that mindset is uh, will help you to kind of keep that motivation. Um, and just a personal anecdote, I guess, is uh, I moving into the digital sphere of business, I um, had to learn how to use a new program that I wasn't already using before entering my job. Um, so quickly, I learned how to use the program. And then I had a client who also needed to learn how to use the program. So I was able to train my client how to use a program. And some of the feedback that I received after doing that was that um, I was easy to learn from. And I think that the reason why I was easy to learn from in that case is because I had just learned it myself. And, you know, when you get so advanced with something, sometimes you can get right into the technicalities of it and it's hard to teach someone that. So that was a, an example of where I was able to provide value even at, at a lower position. Um, so I think that, yeah, definitely keeping in mind that you can create value wherever you are in your, in your career and that it's really important to remember that your position does not does not equate to your value. Um, there's value to be created everywhere. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, we have the final question. I'll let Liz take it away. Sure. And this one is for the entire group. So what would you say is the best piece of advice regarding your professional career that you've ever received? Oh, we'll start with Bronwyn, Rachel, Jane, then Chelsea. That's a tough one uh, because I feel that I've I've learned um, I've I've gotten all sorts of really good advice. I think I think the biggest thing for me personally is I love a plan, and I think I came out of university thinking in a very linear way about what my life was going to look like, and I um, quickly, although maybe not as quickly as I should have learned that 
you know, having a conceptual plan in terms of progression is a good thing, but being open-minded and having some appetite for flexibility and adaptability will serve you very well. And I, I think that that applies to personal life. I've, I've been thrown a few uh, loop-de-loops in my, in my personal life that, um, you know, I've, I've had to grow and, and learn from. And I think, you know, as, as long as you can sort of reflect on the times that maybe haven't gone the way that you thought they were going to go and, and move forward from that, you're, you're in a better place. So I, I think, you know, I, I struggled certainly in my twenties to be patient. I still struggle today to be patient. I like things to happen sort of yesterday in my career, but um, I, I think directionality is important, but maybe the, the, uh, the discrete or concrete plan that um, I certainly wanted when I came out of university is not as important. And I, the, the, the other thing I would say is just that the business world is changing so drastically and so quickly that opportunities are emerging that, you know, two years ago weren't even jobs. So you can only plan so much. And then, you know, as you're open minded and, and find different types of opportunities as the world changes and the business world changes, um, things may come your way that you never anticipated or that didn't even exist, you know, when you graduated from university. Um, my, my piece of advice is actually related kind of to Bronwyn, some of the themes that you were talking about. Um, it, it's this idea of advocating for self and that no one else is looking out for you as much as you are. Um, and that piece came to me in the context of I had a five year plan and I had it visualized and I had my key milestones, but I was kind of keeping it to myself and using it as um, a guide for my own uh, career trajectory. And um, I received the advice to, to share it with my bosses and advocate for what milestones I needed them to be aware of so that we could make sure that I was working towards um, being put on the right projects that would give me the right experience to get to where I wanted to be. Um, so that piece of just making sure that you can have the best boss in the world, but, but they're also worried about their own promotion and raise and, and what have you. So making sure that you're being vocal and, and really advocating for yourself and what you need, both for your career trajectory and plan, but also for your personal work-life balance. Um, piece. And then the other piece that I, I found really resonated with me, a piece of advice that I received was um, that people don't quit their jobs, they quit their bosses. Um, and that came to me at a time where I really felt like I owed something to my company and that I, I had only been there for a short while and really needed to put in a bit more time before I could leave. But the fit just wasn't right um, between myself and my manager. And I uh, eventually did leave and, and it had been so much happier since and and that piece of you don't need to stay at a toxic in a toxic environment um if it's not the right fit and and that's just personality sometimes you're you're not gonna vibe with with your um direct manager and it's okay to seek elsewhere um to find that correct fit I think for me, you know, it's hard to to narrow down to one um, piece. I can think of lots of conversations um, where I received valuable advice, but I'd say one thing, and I think this came up maybe in um, one of your answers, uh, Rachel, at, at some point to an earlier question, but really that uh, in most cases, nothing is really as, as big of a deal as it might seem in the moment. So maybe it's an issue that you're running into on a project or a team that you're working with or a mistake that you made. And I'm sure, um, you know, students who are who are on the call right now can think about situations that they might have where, you know, it, it seems like this is a, a big problem or uh, this is a big deal at the time and, and you think that it's going to have um, perhaps a, a really negative outcome or negative impact. But as you know, the weeks go on and months go on, you do realize that uh, maybe it really wasn't as big of a deal as you once thought it was. So I find that uh, approaching situations with that and really just looking at things in perspective can kind of help you uh, navigate those difficult situations and maybe 
make um, more reasonable decisions when you're not stressed out thinking that it's the end of the world um, when really it isn't. This is all really good. I don't know how I'm gonna add, to, add on to this. I've been taking notes throughout. So, um, but I guess one thing someone told me is that uh, if you wanna see your future, look at the people around you. And although I don't think this should be taken, you know, whole like at, at, at um, face value necessarily, but I think the message of it is true. I think that if you surround yourself with motivated people, you're going to be motivated. And it's really hard to be motivated when you're surrounding yourself with friends and, and your core group are people that are not necessarily motivated and don't have uh, similar goals. So um, one of the things that I did when I joined um, PwC is I, I started to create a group of people that I could lean on and that would also help me. So um, I've become close with those people since and it's been, it's been instrumental. I think, um, you know, nothing, not to be cliche or anything, but nothing worth having is going to be easy. So I think that's also something to remember in your careers is that it's, it's hard. And, you know, sometimes I think people might um, think they don't like their job because it's work, but any, any job that's worth having is going to be a little bit of work, obviously. So I think that um, wrapping that all together, if you do surround yourself with people that are motivated and that can encourage you and help you when you're in those ruts, um, which will inevitably come, then it can really help you in the long run. Thank you everyone for your answers. So now that concludes our panel, but we would like to open up the floor uh, for delegates or anyone on the call that would like to use the Q&A function to ask questions. Um, I will give you a few minutes to answer, but in the meantime, I'll ask um, to all of you, what do you hope students took away from this panel? And we can start with Jane, Bronwyn, um, Chelsea, and then Rachel. Great, yeah, well, first I wanna say um, congratulations to the Women in Business Society and uh, you two and uh, the others who spoke earlier on a, a great event and really happy to be a part of it. I know that you put so much work and so much effort goes into organizing these these uh, conferences and especially in the virtual world. So uh, congrats to, to you all on a successful conference. In terms of what people are taking away from it, um, I hope that they were able to just sort of get a little bit more kind of information about maybe some of our experiences. And I find when you get to listen to other people and see you know, where they've been and where they're going, it kind of helps to maybe give you um, whether it's pieces of advice or, or ideas and how you can apply that to your uh, current situation and how you can apply it going forward. Uh, also, I think that um, getting to hear from uh, the, the panelists, former award winners, and also in celebration of uh, International Women's Day, I know there's many amazing um, students in the Schwartz Business School on. So I would just say to uh, really recognize the ability that you have, the power that you have at any stage in your schooling and any stage in your career and think of ways that you can use that um, for good. Um, I echo everything that Jane said, especially to thank all of the organizers. I was in your shoes a, a while ago and um, I do know how much work uh, goes into these things and how much relief you'll feel in an hour's time when it's all over and and hopefully um, you're doing something fun for your Saturday evening. Um, I, I mean, I hope that people take from this what they need to take from this. I mean, it's it's very individual. We're all coming at it from very background, very different backgrounds and very different life experiences. And um, I, I certainly wouldn't want to be in a position to impose what I think any one person should be taking but I do feel, you know, I, I, I hope that participants who have been listening to the panel um, and all of the wonderful guidance that the panelists have been giving over the last 40 minutes, I, I hope that there's a renewed sense of confidence um, in the spirit of International Women's Day. I hope that folks feel empowered to um, leave tonight and chart their own course, whatever that course may be, um, whether it's different from the path that we've taken or um, similar. Um, I, I think, you know, confidence in 
empowerment uh, will serve you very, very, very well um, with a good dose of empathy coming out of, of Sanovax. Sorry, I forgot the order, but I'll assume I'm next since there's a little bit of a break there. Um, I, yeah, again, to echo every, everything that everyone's been saying, um, I think you take from it what, what you need to at the, at the stage you're in, but um, I would just hope that everyone feels a little bit of encouragement as they're going to whatever's next for them. I know that this conference hosts uh, students of every um, year, but especially for the fourth years, it's it's a hard transition when you leave St. FX. It's such a good community, and quite honestly, I would stay there for the rest of my life if I could, but I guess you do have to move on at some point. But I hope that everyone takes a little bit of encouragement, not only in your career, but also to step into those male-dominated um, areas of business with confidence and, and to feel like you have a space there and to know that you are valued um, wherever you are. And uh, regardless of any of the biases that are happening. Um, I know it's a challenge to get through those. And even though, you know, the world today might tell us that there aren't any in some situations, they're, they're still there. And um, they might be a little bit more subtle, but they're still um, prominent in our careers. So I would just hope that uh, women take from this that, um, again, that confidence and that encouragement to step into those areas with, um, with pride and, and be proud of your work and, and who you are too. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I would just, again, um, thank the Women in Business exec team and, and congratulate you to echo what the panelists have said. In my second year was the first um, Women in Business conference, and it's, it's really amazing to see how it's grown in terms of not only scale, but just kind of professionalism. And, and congratulations to you, especially for putting on such an amazing conference in COVID. Um, hopefully this is the last one that happens virtually. Um, what I would say in terms of what I would hope any students would take away from this panel is just the strength of the network. I know, I know we've spoken to it, um, in response to previous questions, but from my experience, when, when Maddie cold called me to ask if I would be open to spending my Saturday night, um, sharing some thoughts on my experience, I, I couldn't agree fast enough. And I know that should any student reach out on event, if I see any um, LinkedIn message, message from a current St. FX student or alumni, I will happily answer um, to connect and, and share experience or knowledge or anything like that. And I, I know I've leveraged the network um, in my job search in the past. So just feel reassured that that if you're ever feeling a little bit lost, there there are a ton of St. FX alumni and hugely successful Schwartz alumni who will just due to the ring, just to the due to the time that you spent um, in Anaganish, will will likely be happy to lend a helping hand. So that would be something that that I I hope reassures you as you move through um, your degree and then post grad. Awesome, thank you. Um, so that is all the time that we do have for tonight's panel. We wanna thank you all so, so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, your words mean a lot to us and hopefully to our delegates as well. Um, next, I'd like to introduce uh, our vice president again, Rachel Landry, to introduce Jen Alex to the stage. Thank you so much, Bronwyn, Jane, Rachel, and Chelsea. That was an amazing panel. You guys are an inspiration to myself and I know many others here tonight. Dr. Mary Oxner, who is the faculty lead on the Trudy of War since the very beginning, unfortunately could not be with us this evening. To thank the panelists on behalf of the university, I would like to introduce Jen Alex. Jen Alex is an accounting professor here at St. FX. Born and raised in Anaganish, Jen graduated St. FX in 2010 with distinction, earning a Bachelor of Business Administration with a major. Jen then began working in a large publicly traded company while simultaneously studying towards a charter account designation. Working in the industry, Jen took on various roles in retail accounting, internal audit, and external reporting. She began to transition into academia in 2013, teaching night classes before coming to St. FX full-time in the summer of 2015. 
Jen is also the faculty advisor of the Schwartz Women in Business Society, and we are extremely lucky to have Jen's support and guidance in all that we do. Please give me a warm welcome for Jen Alex. Hi everyone, thanks very much for that, Rachel. Um, so first off, I'd like to express my thank you to the panel who joined us this evening. Some are former students, some are friends, but all are women of whom I admire. It's been 20 years of celebrating these fabulous women students at St. of X uh, University and specifically the Schwartz School of Business. So on behalf of the faculty at the Schwartz School, I'd like to begin to thank Dr. Trudy Egan for all you've done for our school. You have expressed your strong connection to the Zaverian family in many ways. The annual speaker series and awards presentation is just one example of your commitment and generosity to our university. The annual speaker series and awards presentations aptly cap celebrates our students' successes and impacts in their communities. And to offer an introduction and welcome to Dr. Trudy Egan, I'd like to pass it on to Maddie Tennant. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Jen, for, for your kind words. Um, now it is my special honor to introduce a beautiful face joining us shortly on the screen tonight, our special guest, Dr. Trudy Egan. Hello, Trudy. Native to New Brunswick, Dr. Trudy Egan is a community advocate, mentor, and friend to many. Recognized as a business leader, Trudy spent 28 years with Sun Media Corporation, rising to the position of executive vice president and chief administrative officer. Trudy is dedicated to St. of X. She served two terms on the St. of X Board of Governors, is a St. of X honorary degree recipient, and was inducted into the Hall of Honor. In 2000, Trudy Egan wanted to thank St. of X for its pivotal role in her life. As one of the few women of her generation to forge her way into the upper echelons of the corporate world, Trudy wanted to support the next generation of young women leaders studying business at St. of X. She consulted the students on what would make the most impact in their careers. They said financial support and mentorship. With this feedback and a generous gift to St. of X, Trudy created an endowment that would provide two $3,000 awards annually to two female students graduating from the business school. The successful recipients needed to demonstrate strong academic performance, perseverance, and how they were making a positive impact in the community. Since the awards establishment, the application process has been competitive. From a short list, Trudy makes the difficult decision, um, makes the final difficult decision. Much to the delight of the awardees, Trudy also calls each successful candidate. Usually the two awards are given out by Trudy at a special ceremony, which features a keynote address delivered by a woman leader from the business community. Tonight, Trudy will virtually announce the next two awardees. Please help me welcome Dr. Trudy Egan. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be on campus tonight virtually. And thanks, sorry, and thanks everyone for your generous words. I am truly moved. I've had texts coming in saying, wow, we had no idea you were that important. So thank you for ensuring that my friends now know that. Uh, there are many people who are responsible for the establishment and ongoing success of this award. And I want to thank two women who have been key players. Back in 99, when I was part of the team at Sun Media, who successfully led a management buyout, the ink had barely dried on the purchase agreement when I received the call from Ann Kamosi, who was then head of development at St. Beck. Hold on. She said she was planning to be in Toronto in a few days, and would I have a half hour to meet with her? I said I would make time, and as I hung up, I smiled. Full marks to Anne, I thought, the first woman off the mark to ask me to consider a serious donation. We had an excellent meeting, established the parameters for the awards, 
Ann's idea was to add the bonus of a speaker series, and the rest is history. It is one of my proudest accomplish accomplishments. I've met many impressive young women on campus who have gone on to light fires in their lives. You've heard from four of them today, all at different stages in their careers. And it makes me so proud to hear them and to know that when I made the choices, as difficult as it was, that they were the right choices. Although each year, the majority of the candidates, if not all, would have been worthy recipients. So congratulations to the four in the panel tonight, and you're well on your way to success. Bronwyn was one of my earliest winners. And in true maritime fashion, I've become part of the Burke family. I just show up in East Dover with my suitcase and her mom and dad, Allie and Kevin, simply sat another place at their warm and welcoming table. The other key person I want to thank tonight is Dr. Mary Oxner, an excellent, involved, and much respected professor here. She also has a wicked sense of humor, which makes working with her each year on these awards a true adventure. I know that all I have to do is arrive on campus and all will run smoothly from beginning to end. In fact, some of the times I've arrived on campus, I've ended up taking Mary's bedroom and spending the night there, which has proven to be a great deal of fun. She makes great breakfast. There were a couple of times that our group, those I brought to campus as my speakers, and Mary and a couple of others in Anaganish, we were close to being asked to leave the airport. But Mary whipped us back into shape. And that was, after, of course, that was after the awards and speeches had taken place and we were about to get out of town. And that brings me to the part of the evening where I proudly announce this year's winners. These awards are truly a labor of love for me. I am able to choose two fourth year women in business students who are about to embark on the next chapter of their lives and assist them financially in some small way. The difficult part each year I know this sounds like a cliche, but it's true. The difficult part each year is choosing only two out of the impressive young women who apply. This year has been no different. It was truly a very difficult task to select the winners. It's also heartening to see the diversity of candidates begin to expand to reflect the world we live in. There remains a lot of grow, a lot of room to grow, but it is moving in the right direction. And now for this year's winners in alphabetical order. Our first new member of the Econet Club, and they have to find themselves as Econets. The first new member is sincere, hardworking, and has been in the top 5% on the Dean's List for all four years. She's currently working on an independent honors thesis addressing issues faced by neurodiverse individuals, specifically those with autism. I have a dear friend who has a son on the high spectrum of autism and work such as this is very necessary and will help make a difference. She's a leader on campus and fully present in the community. She's a great team member which will serve her well in life, but she can also go it alone. Kate, okay, Kate, you're going to have to forgive me here. I'm going to try to ensure I, I pronounce your last name correctly. The Albertinson sets the bar very high and goes over it. Combined with her strong moral compass, these life skills will ensure she stands out when she takes on her next challenge. Kate has faced major medical issues and has shown determination and resilience 
in dealing with her share of adversity. Now, is that Kate that's come up on the screen with me? Hi, Kate. What Hi. a beautiful young woman in addition to all your other attributes. Great uh -huh. to see you I'm and glad. to virtually meet you. No, it's so nice to meet you as well. Um, thank you so much. This is such an honor to be receiving this award and hearing from other women that are a part of this network was really nice tonight. Um, it was I, for me too, Kate. It was great. Yeah. yeah, it was a great experience. And it's just cool to see that side of it as well, which is something I didn't get to see before through the application and through hearing about it. So I, I did about that. I'm just so proud of the four on the panel tonight and also the other winners who some I've kept in touch with on and off. And I've developed a really good relationship. I'm proud of every winner that has been chosen over the past, past 20 years. So yes. welcome to the Egan Ads. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> Great. There is no question in my mind that Kate will not only succeed in the world of business, but will do so by being kind, respectful, and compassionate along the way. So Kate, it gives me great pleasure to award you the 2022 Dr. Trudy Egan Women in Business Award. Mary Ochsner, who unfortunately can't be with us tonight, she's at a funeral in Halifax, will provide all the details and we'll actually turn over the financial part of it as soon as she's back on Monday. So congratulations. I wish you nothing but the best, but I know based on what you've done so far that you're going to continue to be a real success. So I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to building a relationship as well. Excellent. And you can, you will meet the rest of the events especially those for tonight, and Bronwyn, who kind of sleeps in my bedroom when she's here. In fact, she showed up tonight at the door with a suitcase. I had no idea she was coming. <laughs> That's kind of what the units do, okay? So I'm congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Now, our next winner tonight is a young woman who came from a great distance to earn her BBA from St. Apex. It was a new climate, a new culture, and a very different environment. She has, pers she has persevered and left her mark both on campus and in Anaganish and surrounding communities. She tells me she has learned to be a compassionate leader, which is something I had to learn to survive in a male-oriented newspaper business where I spent 28 years. It served me very well. And at this point in time, I have to tell you, Sharon, <laughs> Sharon King, that uh, I kind of ran out of time to make notes. So I'm just going to freelance here, okay? okay. And you're beautiful. So it's so great to see you. <laughs> I ended up having two days in the hospital this week, which threw me totally off. So here I sit, thank God it's just from the waist mm -hmm. up because I'm hooked up to monitors and all the rest of it. So uh, you hold uh, a special place in the Egan Ads because my first real job leaving Santa Fax was in Nassau, where you come from. Mm -hmm. I offered a job at Trust Corporation Palmas, which you will know is a big deal there. And all I really cared about was living somewhere where I could get a tan and feel good. Anyway, it turned out to be a great job that took me to Europe and I traveled for two years and ended up back in Toronto, which is where I started my career in the newspaper business. So I just want to say that you're very impressive, not only with what you've overcome coming from totally different environment than you're in now and not making it, it's not always easy to do that. I know going the other way was easier, but 
I commend you on everything you've done to not only be absorbed and involved in the campus, but to also start your own business. What a fabulous idea. It never occurred to me that there would be a need for something such as the salon that you're now operating that takes, you know, that involves and takes care of women who have very different black hair. And it's not always easy. I know when I lived in Nassau, there would be women that came into the office in the day saying, oh my God, I've got a hat on because I just can't do anything with it. So now you're the magic person taking care of them and delighted to hear that you hope to be able to open a storefront property in Anaganish, which will be well received. So all of that to say, I'm delighted that you are one of the winners this year. Your accomplishments are many. And had I had time to write them all out, I would have, but to everyone who's listening, let me just tell you that Sharon has gone the extra mile. She works very hard. She involves herself not only in the community and the university, but in jobs all over the place to allow her to do this. So it's my pleasure to welcome you to the ENS and to congratulate you on the 2022 Dr. Trudy Egan Women's Business Award. And Thank you I so you much. Think best. Mm -hmm. I know that you'll be successful. All the Eganets are, okay? Yes. Yes, I am honored to be a part of such a prestigious group and just to be recognized like on the heel of International Women's Day. It's, I am truly honored and grateful and I'm proud to refer to myself as an Eganet. Thank I'm you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Trudy, and a warm congratulations to my peers for earning this award. All right, so Trudy, please don't go anywhere yet. To end this evening, we have a surprise that we'd like to present to you. On behalf of the Schwartz School of Business and Women in Business Society, we wanted to thank you, our mentor, for 20 years of support. Your commitment to women in business actually inspired the creation of our society. As we came upon the 10th anniversary of our society, we also realized that 2020 marked 20 years since you first presented the award. We could not let this milestone go by without appropriate fanfare and celebration. Given COVID and the scope of the surprise, along with the full participation of the past awardees, it took us nearly two years to create the surprise. So with that being said, Trudy, we have something to present to you. We are going to turn on your screen, it's already on. Um, and uh, we're gonna turn it over to Bronwyn Burke to present the gift. So for the, so I guess we'll let you open it. <laughs> but, but while I'm opening it, let me just say, I had no idea that because of the awards that I established that the women in business uh, was established. That's fabulous. I'm very proud of that. Yeah, Bronwyn's helping me open this, by the way, because it's got like 14 strings and everything else. This is exciting. I love presents. Oh my gosh. My name is Wow. <laughs> this is special. Trudy, this is what I was supposed to present to you when I was supposed to come visit you in December. So after a long overdue. <laughs> this is amazing. So for the audience, um, what Trudy is looking at is a, is a beautiful 56 page book with updates on all the awardees over the past 20 years, including their tributes to Trudy and their advice to the next generation of women business leaders. I can say that through leading this extraordinary project, I have been touched by the accomplishments and stories of all winners. It is so surreal to see Trudy opening this book after two years of hard work and dedication to making this uh, possible. Um, so Trudy, this book it was a labor of love. We hope it captures our deep appreciation and respect for you. Well, I'm so the, blown away. 
absolutely beautiful. And I will value it and I will read every page at least twice. And I'm kind of glad we didn't get to do this back in December because it's so appropriate being able to do it tonight. So I, I've really been blown away by tonight. I hearing, first of all, I'm, I never use the doctor except when I'm on campus. Cause I, I don't know, I feel it's kind of like cheating. My husband, mm -hmm. I had this uh, bet going that he would get a doctorate, an honorary doctorate from his university, which is Windsor, if and when I got one from Santa Bat. Well, guess what? I won that bet. And it took him a couple of years to get over it until he finally got his. <laughs> this is uh, extra special and hearing each of the uh, praising me and the panel, I, I just really, I know that it's something I love and something I put my heart and soul into, but I didn't quite realize the impact that it has had. So tonight has been truly um, an outstanding and for me emotional night. So I thank you all very much. Now the thank you. Part of the no. Just as far as I definitely make sure they're in a bar. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Trudy. And I'm glad you finally have that book in your hands and I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, so I guess I'll pass it over to Amy and Liz to wrap up this evening. I just want to send out a huge uh, thank you and congratulations to all the award winnies and um, have a great evening, everyone. Congratulations to all the award recipients. It has been a spectacular night. So touching. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, we are all done. Um, wow, what a weekend. What a, what a day and a half. Yes. It's, it's been a, quite a conference for, to remember. Um, as our last Women in Business conference, um, I will definitely cherish this weekend for a long time. Yeah, for sure. Totally agree. This is actually my first year on the Web Exec. So I went to the conference the past couple of years, but then this is my first time being behind the scenes. And it's been like such a cool experience to see how much work was on the back end. And I know that a lot of the people on the call here too um, have been like past with executives so they know exactly what's sort of going on here um so it's really really cool and um it's been like an honor to work with amy and with the rest of the executives so i'm nothing but grateful for this whole thing yes and it's been an honor working with you liz um the past two years um you know with covid and everything we had to make the conference virtual last year which i was uh, accepted the position of VP of conference way before uh, COVID was even on the horizon. And then all of a sudden we had to pivot to virtual. So doing this two years in a row of virtual conference, it's, it's been getting better and better every year and working through the kinks. And that's something that's been very special and being able to be with people um, from the business school and still being in that networking environment, but do, learning to do things a little bit differently and virtually and working with Liz and the executive team and Maddie and Rachel, we owe you a big thank you uh, for all your hard work and this whole year planning for this weekend. It's, it's quite incredible being here at the end um, tonight. But uh, nonetheless, I'll Good things must come to an end. And we're going to hear one more word from Trudy. <laughs> okay. To end it by saying a particular thanks to Maddie and her team, all of you, who I know have worked so hard on making this all come together. And I will tell you that when I was graduating from St. Evax, if someone had asked me to put this together, it would not have even borne the resemblance to what you have done. 
So that that itself makes me so proud that you young women today, God, I sound old, but I am. You young women today are just so advanced and so with it and are coming out of university with so much more pizzazz and knowledge than I have. So you are all set to go. Well, thank you, Trudy. It, what a great ending. Um, so we do have some awards to give out for, for the conference, um, but we're going to do them a little bit differently this year. So you'll be receiving a message if you were the top participator, showed the most spirit throughout the weekend. So um, be sure to check your um, Instagram DMs from the Women in Business Society. <laughs> okay. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. And that concludes um, the end of conference. Yeah.